The iconic east front at Wentworth Wood House is highlighted by six large and elegant lamp standards. These were installed in the early 19th century and would have originally been lit by oil. Decades of neglect had left the lamp standards in a dangerously unsafe condition. The cast iron sections of the lamp standard cages had fractured in many places and bandings which had been added to keep the cages together had also failed. The principal cause of this damage was rust. As the protective paint finishes on the lamp standards decayed, water caused oxidisation or rusting of the cast iron and as this expands it has the power to break rivets and joints, ultimately making the cages structurally unsound. Interestingly, the lamp standard to the bottom of the south steps was of a different design to the rest and is perhaps a complete replacement of an original which had failed previously. The construction of this piece was also slightly different to the other five, but as yet we don't know when this work was undertaken. Removing the lamp standards was a delicate operation. We originally thought that we'd have to cut through the joints in the cast iron panels to remove them from their stone bases. In fact, we only had to cut through the rust that secured the lamp standards to their base plates. We could then lift off the cages as a single unit without damage to the stone or the body of the cages themselves. It was clear that each of the cages is made up of several parts. They comprise four tapered panels made in grey cast iron and were originally sand cast as flat backed panels with mitered and screwed together joints in the corners running the full height of the hollow cage. On the top of each cage is a decorative cap, again made of grey cast iron, and the lanterns sit on top of these. The restoration of the lamp standards has been undertaken by a number of local companies. It's been made possible thanks to a single donation from the Elizabeth Kayser Charitable Trust, and we're incredibly grateful for this generosity. Without this donation, the work simply couldn't have taken place. Lanterns were removed from the top of the lamp standards and these were sent to Kanza Lighting at Elsica, just a couple of miles away from Wentworth Woodhouse itself. The lantern frames are made of copper with hand-blown glass panels. A line of lamb's tongue decoration made out of brass runs around the top of the lanterns and delicate ram's head masks cast in lead adorn each of the corners. A team of artisans and metal workers cleaned, reassembled, rewired and reglazed the decorative lanterns and even in their unpainted state, the transformation is incredible. Meanwhile, the cast iron cage panels were transported to the workshop of Ridgeway Forge in Sheffield. After shot blasting, close inspection of the cast iron panels revealed that around 75% of the original material could be reused. The lamp standard at the foot of the south stairs could be reused in its entirety, using all of its original material. Despite piecing broken sections together like a jigsaw puzzle, it became clear that several new cast iron panels would be required. To recreate the lamp standard cage sections that we couldn't reuse, we employed techniques that the original Georgian craftsman would have been very familiar with. Initially, a pattern needed to be made from sections of the original cages. This was done by a local company, MD Patterns, based at nearby Elsica. The pattern was very precisely carved in timber and took 148 hours to create. It's accurate to 10 one thousandths of an inch. The 
pattern was sent to Trent Castings Limited at Mansfield, where it was used to form sand moulds into which the molten iron would be poured to make the new cast iron panels. This is exactly the same method that the original craftsmen employed to make the lamp standard cages over 200 years ago, and exactly the same levels of craftsmanship and care were employed in making the replacement sections. Grey cast iron is one of the oldest and most commonly used forms of iron. It's grey because of the presence of graphite flakes in the metal. It's strong, but it's much more brittle than steel and has a melting point of around 1260 degrees centigrade. At Trent Castings, the cast iron was made by remelting scrap in an induction furnace. During the remelting process, the composition was refined and additions made to form SG iron, which is less brittle than traditional grey cast iron. After being poured into the moulds, the cast iron is left to cool and solidify before the mould is broken open to reveal the new casting. Once reassembled and painted with an undercoat, the lamp standards were returned to Wentworth Woodhouse to be replaced on their stone plinths. It was a delicate operation to replace the cages without damaging either the base to which they're fitted or the stone on which they stand. But it was successfully done and the cages looked wonderful when in situ, even in their incomplete state. Earlier in the process, we'd undertaken paint analysis of the lamp standards to see if we could determine what colour they had originally been painted. The investigation revealed that 24 decorative schemes had been applied. The oldest schemes appear an early interpretation of a Brunswick green colour with the use of lead chromate and Prussian blue pigments. They appear as thinly applied washers over a stone colour base coat. The lamp standards had been returned to Wentworth Woodhouse with this stone coloured base layer applied and initially it looked quite stark against the facade of the house. Originally, it seems that the painted decoration was varnished or glazed. This would have helped to protect the ironwork and also create a more translucent effect. We decided to attempt a recreation of this look to complete the restoration and this work was done by specialists Hesp Jones and Company based in York. The results are stunning. And now, after many months of specialist work involving thousands of hours, the beautiful lamp standards have been returned to Wentworth Woodhouse. One final flourish was added when we applied gilding to the ram's head masks and finials of the lanterns. finished work is a triumph of traditional craftsmanship and a real credit to the men and women who have trained in heritage skills so that projects like this can still be undertaken today. We're delighted with the results and incredibly pleased that so much of the work undertaken could be completed by local companies. <laughs>